You've done some work on collagen peptides, and um, I'm curious as to one, if it affects, you know, pain, joint pain too, how it is as a protein, because people are like, hey, collagen protein, protein's protein. Um, yeah. So those two issues, collagen as just a protein source as food versus, you know, its effect on pain or joint function or joint support. Yeah. So another hot topic, uh, collagen, we got into collagen about five years ago. Um, I was trying to predict the next thing that was going to be a good topic to go after. We decided to choose collagen and it was a cool ride. So what we ended up doing in our hands was testing. We, we're going to do a dose testing. I wanted to see if 10 or 20 was a better dose because that was what was typically given. And I wanted to, I guess, because I'm getting older, I wanted to use uh, athletes. Mike, have... Mike, you're 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 a baby compared to Tony. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks. I'm just looking in the mirror of my future here, my hair and everything. Here we go. <laughs> hey, no, no, uh, uh, Mike, that's from your kids. That's why you're getting white hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. True. So, uh, so we did a, a nine month study. So we chose middle aged, active individuals, and they had to. We called them lifelong active individuals because they had to be at least 15 years of activity um, throughout their life. But many of them were much longer than that. But we had a wide range of people. So some just walked a lot and some were high level uh, masters athletes in different sports. So big range of individuals. And so we did zero, three, six, nine months of supplementation of zero, 10 or 20 grams per day. Longest collagen study I've ever seen. I said, goodness, if it's going to work, it's going to be, this is the study where we're going to see something. You okay. had to have pain. Look, to get I'm sorry study. to interrupt you real quick, Mike, but I don't think people realize how inordinately difficult it is to do these kinds of long-term studies. They are, in fact, I try to talk students out of it. It's like, you want to do a study that lasts eight weeks? Or, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> and you're doing one that lasted, it was nine months, right? right. Yeah. yeah, nine months. Those are crazy hard to do so well, i'm sure it just, when it was proposed it's like okay well well let's try yeah it. yeah so nine months took four years that's that that's wow. how that works yeah because you don't start everybody at, at the same time right so it took forever and this all the credit goes to one of my old uh, master's students who's now or one of my old phd students who's now doing her postdoc with arnie ferrando yes um, dr shaloa kievkovsky and she's fabulous. You should probably have her on for your own collagen show, a whole collagen show. She's really good at this stuff. Um, but and it was her dissertation was was this work. Anyway, we we looked at zero, uh, three, six, and nine months of supplementation, all kinds of outcomes. But we were primarily interested in joint pain. Like it was it was you take this product, you come back in, you check with us. We had food logs, all kinds of questionnaires, validated questionnaires for knee pain and everything. Um, and at the end of all of that, we found basically two outcomes I think are cool, at least for the general public. One of them was that 10 grams seemed to be the most efficacious dose mm. over 20. Also, the only people who had a benefit exercised the most. So oh. if we dichotomized our group, only the people, and I'm, maybe there were a few others, but in general, mostly the people who exercise more than 180 minutes per week, which is not a lot, That's not, yeah. they had better outcomes in terms of joint pain than people who exercise less than 180 minutes per week. So it seems like you have to be using, you have to be active and you have to take, and the dose for us was 10 grams. And so people say, I've said that before, they say, well, so is, is it the thing? Are you going to recommend everybody to take it? I don't think I'm there yet. I think it's a cool study. I think it's a long duration study. I think it shows some possible benefit for this population. Um, I think we need more data. We're trying to figure out mechanisms because it's all over the place with how this stuff works. And that's what Shalo is working on now. In fact, we just are working on a second grant, which will be a collaboration with my group and uh, University of Arkansas Medical School to look at collagen use through uh, ACL reconstruction. So if that um, carries on, that'll be really cool to see if it helps with coming back to play or return to play uh, after that. So neat, but it seems like 10 grams, take it for a long time to have it work and you need to be active if it's going to be of any type of benefit. Why would, why would 10 grams work and 20 grams not work or work less? I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, but 
consistently we saw 10 grams being uh, 20 still worked in some outcomes, but 10 just seemed to be better across the board. So it's not that it won't work, but in our hands, the people who had 10 seem to do better than the others. And maybe there's a dose response or we turn off some receptor. I don't really know. We didn't do any of that work in this study, but we are looking at the uh, different proteins that turn on or off for collagen turnover. And that's our next paper we're working on now, one that I hope that will get out this fall at some point. Tony, do you have fighters on any of these joint supplements or collagen? Or I mean, because talk about a group that trains a hell of a lot more. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a consideration <laughs> after hearing what what's Mike, Mike is discussing now. Um, you know, we've made efforts, right? I mean, throughout the years, and I've, I've tailed back on fighters I work with, but we were much more centered on glucosamine chondroitin and the fish oils. And at, th at that time, those were, you know, better understood to potentially mitigate the pain or inflammation that's associated with the joint. Uh, it's becoming more popular now, the collagen uh, proteins for that reason. Um, I haven't personally tried them, but I think I might because as an old man who's still doing very stupid things, I might be able to use that 10 grams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, it's one of those things. I, I would give it a try, but I'm not gonna hang my hat on it just yet that it's gonna work for everybody. But we that's what we found. Uh, some of those papers will be coming out soon, hopefully. Uh, published in, in the literature, actually ones with JSSN, which will which will hopefully be turned around here uh, pretty soon for a second review. So we're, we're hopeful on that. The, the other thing is collagen, though, is being bashed all over the place because when you compare it to something like whey for muscle growth, it's not the choice that right. like, that shouldn't be compared. Uh, you should probably have your dose of whey and your dose of collagen right. for separate reasons. But then people say, well, how do the amino acids know where to go? Like, how is it targeted to the joint versus these other places? We don't know the answer. You don't that. know, right? The collagen mechanist people will say that it's these cyclic hydroxyproline proline molecules that are the ones yeah. that are doing all that, the magic. I don't know exactly how it's working yet. We've got plenty more to do in that space. Um, but if you're talking hair and nails, seems like collagen has a lot of literature on it. If you're talking about pain in the joints, there's a growing body of literature. If you're talking about body composition, muscle growth, collagen isn't the protein you want to be using. Mike, do you use any supplements for your joints since you're, you know, up there in age, you know, you're getting up there a little bit? Yeah, uh, my joints are still okay, luckily. So the only one I've taken is collagen. And, oh, okay. uh, you know, that was after after these studies, I decided to, to try it. So, you know, that's just something in part of the daily routine. And again, I'm not sure if it's working or not. So at so, 10 grams, Mike. That's right. Yeah. And the dose on almost every bottle is 20. So I just cut it in half. Okay.